now, right 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 now, oh, I got a real good feeling. We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the world. The government Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and in today's episode we are excited to be bringing you some content today talking about none other than how bitcoin will double within the next 18 months guys i do believe that the bull market is here i've been telling you guys for the last year or so that the bull market would be kicking off very soon probably quarter four of 2023 to quarter one of 2024 leading up to the bitcoin having i believe the rally that we saw a couple of weeks ago is the beginning of that movement and i am very confident at this point that bitcoin is going to have a very bullish 2024 and i want to explain to you why by the end of quarter one 2025 i believe bitcoin will be sitting at double its current price over seventy five thousand dollars and i'm also going to share with you some altcoins that i believe are going to more than 5x within that time. Very excited to be here today. Thank you all for tuning in and joining. If you guys are regulars to the stream, let's go ahead and pump, pump, pump up those like uh, that like button. Let's see if we can't get to 100 likes right out the gate. That helps to let YouTube know that this is a stream that people are enjoying. So if you want to share what we're doing here today with more people, the best way you can do that is by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and staying tuned. So we got a lot of content. If you didn't watch yesterday's video, I would recommend you going back and doing it. I explained why I believe that Cardano is going to 30x in the next six years. That is not an exaggeration. I actually also saw on Twitter this morning that a um, a good friend of mine uh, was believing that Cardano may even go to $10 by the end of the uh, bull market. So I'm predicting $10 by the end of the, um, by the end of, what am I trying to say? By the end of the decade, a good friend of mine over on YouTube is predicting by the end price predictions over Crypto Capital Venture. He's saying 10 bucks by the end of the bull market. Again, I like to make a little bit more conservative predictions, and they normally come true because I do that. But $10 on Cardano coming soon. Make sure to check out that video if you have not seen it already. All right, let's read some chat, and then we're going to jump straight on into it. Philly Skills 1428 said, Good morning, fam. Good morning to you as well. <clears throat> Mike Lowry's in chat, as always. Thank you so much for being such a faithful moderator, Mike Lowry. Really appreciate you, my friend. Joe Bollier's in chat. Cryptofer is in chat. Said, All right now, right now. Herman Barbara is in chat. Coin operator saying hashtag Finsov. Ox Anna to let's see. Sisios. Sisios said good morning. I've got to ask, is that a Greek name? I'm not sure. I've never seen that name before, but that's a really, really cool name. That sounds like a superhero name. I feel like you need to we need to revive Stan Lee and bring that name to him and have him make a superhero named Oxana Sisios. That's an awesome name. Crypto Mini Bikes in chat said good morning, everyone. Mike Lowry dropping some great advice and it is advice don't forget to hit their like buttons on the way in hashtag fence off liu.s.f is in chat said good night everybody good night everybody welcome to saturday night live except it's not bad anymore i'm just kidding craig the space bum is in chat let me just ask how do you panhandle in space I don't know. I got no. I got nothing. I got nothing. My dad jokes are on. Uh, you know, we did leg press and we did squats today, so I'm uh, I'm a little bit spent, missing out on my dad jokes. You guys will have to tell me how how you panhandle in space. All right, Mike Lowry said, Jeb, didn't you say you were doing some content with George? What happened to that? Well, we were working on it and we decided to change gears. I still want to do some content with George. Um, love George. I'm really excited for everything that he's doing over there. Um, to be honest with you, I'm looking at some of the content over on on CRU Plus. I'm like, dang, this is good stuff. Whew, this is good stuff. If you guys are not watching already, you absolutely should. Jay said, good morning from Tucson, Arizona. <sighs> reminds me of that song. Uh, I went from Phoenix, Arizona. All that. that reminds me of that song. Um, let's see. We're heading into a recession and markets are rolling over. Stop making people FOMO. 
Not trying to make people FOMO. I believe every prediction I say. I am on more than just a double. Anyway, good to see you, Chris SF said. It very well may. All right, let's jump straight on over to coin market cap. Right now, Bitcoin trading at $35,000, up 1% over the last 24 hours, up 3% in the last seven days. Pretty excited about that because Bitcoin is managing to rally even in the midst of it. Um, how should we say, consolidating post-rally. If we look at the market here, Bitcoin has managed to go through a massive rally to the upside and is continuing to trend upwards. It's continuing to set higher highs. And today I'm going to talk to you about why I believe that Bitcoin is going to more than double in the next 18 months. And I almost said in the next 12 months in the title, because to be honest with you, I would not be at all surprised if it came before the end of November in 2024. But <clears throat> we're going to have to be just a little bit more conservative. I like to be a little bit more conservative with my predictions following one of the principles that I decided I would live by about five years ago that I always try to underjudge uh, what is going to happen so that I walk around pleasantly surprised all the time. I think that there is a lot of wisdom in underestimating how good something's going to be so that you don't walk around disappointed all the time. I think that's something that we do when we're kids, for example. We're like, man, this is going to be the best thing ever. And then it happens. You're like, that was cool, but it wasn't the best thing ever. And then you're sad. So I think that we're going to see at least a doubling within the next 18 months. But to be honest with you, there is a part of me that's pulling on my heartstrings saying, wait a minute, it's going to be sooner than that. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Shout out to Schmedley B and Queen and everyone else in chat. And Scotty Schofield said, good morning, sir, South Alabama. Are you rolling with the tide or are you burning with Auburn? I got to ask, who is it? I got to know it. I got to know what side we're on. I come from a family that's been rolling with the tide for 50 years and I am in Gator Nation right now, so I get in trouble saying that. But hey, seven national championships, can't argue with it. All right. Let's continue on here. Right now Bitcoin trading at $35,000 and as I say, I do believe that that's going to continue moving to the upside. Let me explain a little bit why. I'll briefly go over my prediction for what's going to happen over the next couple of months and then we'll explain how that will extrapolate out into a return to all-time high, which would be a doubling from where we are now within the next 18 months, but probably within the next 12. All right, so our prediction for how the rest of this market is going to play out uh, over the course of the rest of this year is that we're going to have some sideways action followed by more than likely some kind of correction. If it doesn't happen, look, that means that we're even closer to all of this than we thought. And remember, there's like 15 different things that Bitcoin can do here. So it's very hard to say that something is a 70% likelihood of happening. That's just not the way that it ever works. There's always so many things that can happen that any prediction is very much likely to not be over 50% likely. But we can talk about the different scenarios and we can prepare for them accordingly, which I think is the major point of technical analysis, understanding what could happen so that we can understand how we could prepare. It's much easier to prepare for a hurricane if you have seven days warning that it is coming. So Bitcoin is trading sideways here. Would not be at all surprised to see a small correction down to 32.8 to 32.9. Those levels come from the following numbers. 32. 811 comes from the 0.5% Fibonacci ratio, uh, Fibonacci number here, from a retracement from all-time high down to local bear market bottom. That is a very important level, and it lines up very closely with 32,935, which is another level that's important, and it comes from this level right here. I'll just go ahead and remove these bottom two lines. So it's a little bit easier to see. These are the two lines. These white lines are the ones that we are talking about. The bottom one at 32,811, and they blend together because they're so close. 32,811 comes from the 0.5 level. 32,935 is our bottom that we set here on, what was it, the January the 24th, Monday of 2022. If we correct, that will be our first major level of support because it also lines up with the 0.236 uh, Fibonacci retracement level from the high that we set just a couple of days ago. That's sitting at 32,944. So it's basically the exact same number. If we correct, this is the exact first place that we're going to go. So we'll just go ahead and draw our green box. That is our floor, sir. That is our floor. If we don't correct down there and we just start setting support at 35, because remember, 35 is a big even, then look at that. We hit it exactly on 35. That's pretty cool. If the market does manage to hold above 35K for a number of weeks and sets that as its floor, well, that just shows us that there is quite a lot of greed in the market. And that would not be a surprising revelation because as Bitcoin has been very gradually rallying, it has been, but as it's been very gradually rallying, the total market capitalization has been aggressively rallying. And that's because over the last several days, we have seen quite a lot of bullishness out of quite a few altcoins. Binance up 10% on the week. XRP up 14% on the week. Cardano's up to 35 cents, up 22%. On the week, Dogecoin up 11%, Toncoin up a ton, up to 20, uh, up, excuse me, up 25% 
TRX Tron not doing great. Poor Justin Sun not having his day in the sun. Chainlink up 27%. Polygon's up 23%. Litecoin's up 9%. <clears throat> not bad. Not bad at all. And the Fear and Greed is, is, of course, currently sitting at 73 and so we're looking at quite a lot of bullishness in the cryptocurrency market right now. Again, remember back to the altcoin engine analogy. You've got one side of the market, Bitcoin, that rallied and got the whole process started. It came back down and now we've got Bitcoin, excuse me, the altcoins rallying. And so that is leading the total market capitalization charts just into this upward and to the right market. If you guys are enjoying today's stream, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Crypto Mini Bike said, I'm ready to quit shoveling snow someday and have a palm tree in the yard. I've got three palm trees in the yard. I tell you what, they come with their own headaches. Uh, palm trees are wonderful, but they do come with their own headaches. Sorry. Shane Sullivan's in chat said, hi, Jeb. Josh Denham said, woo, pig. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Um, but Crypto Mini Bike, I will say that it's probably a lot less work than shoveling snow. I have never had to do that. I take that back. On our honeymoon, we were on this. There was this really, really steep driveway, and it snowed in. And it was steep enough that if I tried to go down there with all the snow on there, the car would have lost traction. And we would have both, you know, not come home, and that would have sucked because it just it would not have been fun. So we spent four hours um, carting boiling water out into the yard with salt in it to try and salt the driveway. And so never done actual show, snow shoveling, but I have had to deal with clearing a driveway with no equipment because there's nothing there. There's not a shovel. Somehow there's not a shovel. So I get it. It's a lot. Shadrach Frost is in chat. Funny timing to say Shadrach Frost talking about snow. Say good morning, Jeb and Crypto Channel. Good morning to you as well. Shovel palm tree seeds. Yeah, John Doe's right. They get everywhere. They get everywhere. All right. Continuing right along here, the thing I want to bring to your attention is that the total market capitalization charts have been absolutely rocketing to the upside. We're at 1.3 trillion, which is a new high, and that should not be ignored. This is a very serious, serious, serious deal. Being above 1.25 trillion is a big deal in its own right because that's above one and a quarter trillion dollars. But being above the Yearly high indicates that we are in new territory on total. It indicates that the altcoins are driving total cryptocurrency market capitalization growth. It's not just Bitcoin. There is a market-wide movement going on right now. This initial leg up was from Bitcoin exploding, and the altcoins weren't really doing anything because they were standing back in pure awe of the way Bitcoin was acting. And then Bitcoin took a second, sat down, calmed down, and the altcoins started to take off, and we see continued sustained growth from them. That is the altcoin engine at work, and that's what we saw happen many times during the 2020 and 2021 bull market. When the Bitcoin market paused, the altcoins were rallying, and when the altcoin market paused, Bitcoin was rallying. And so you had this continual up and to the right movement from the market. When you look at the Bitcoin market, it looks like a stock. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. When you look at total one, it looks a lot more like the S&P 500, doesn't it? It's a lot smoother. If you bring up a BTC chart here and compare 2020 and 2021, you'll see exactly what I mean. The market just looks smoother. It's a little bit hard to see because for some reason that chart is coming in on linear, not on log. But the point here is that I may be able to change that. The point here is that, see if I can change that to log. I'm not sure if there's a way to do that. I don't think you can. Either way, you can see that there's a lot more fluctuation in here in the Bitcoin market than in the total market capitalization charts because the total market capitalization charts is almost a chart that's an index of the market. I really wish that you could buy the total market cap charts. I tell you what, I would recommend in a heartbeat a massive index fund that broadly covered the top 100 cryptocurrencies and weighted it in a managed manner, kind of like what the S&P 500 does. If we had access to that kind of fund, I would recommend it in a moment's notice because the total market capitalization charts is such an important market, one that we need to pay close attention to. And part of the reason for that is because it is continu continuing to rally even as certain altcoins go up or down. It is a broad-based index of the market, and we're very excited to see that it is rallying. Now, a couple of things I want to draw from this. With Bitcoin performing so well, and with total performing so well, it is possible that Bitcoin just rallies here up to 40K by the end of the year. If you'll remember, our price prediction from the beginning of the year was thirty-five dollars to $50,000 by year's end. We've, no we've now hit $35,000, so we're comfortably within that box. Even if we drop from here, we did end up hitting that level. There's enough bullishness and exuberance and hope for the bull market that I would not be surprised to see just a blow-off rally in the next couple of years. And then, excuse me, in the next couple of months. And the reason for that is that when the bull market finally did start back over here and we finally had confirmation that it was taking place, it shot up so fast. 
because the amount of money that can flow in when you have a hype cycle is massive. Now, there's a couple of differences this time. This time we have a huge amount of of distraction in the media with the uh, the presidential election coming up. That's about to start getting big in the news in the in the news cycle. You have the war between Israel and Hamas right now that is taking a lot of the media's attention. There's still a little bit of attention on the Russian-Ukrainian war, probably not as much as there should be for such an important conflict, but it's not what's getting eyeballs because it's not new anymore, and it's called the news for a reason. So it is going to be difficult for Bitcoin to break into the news cycle. But if Bitcoin can take one more leg up to probably about 40K, it's already getting talked about, but if it can take one more leg up to about 40K or we get a spot ETF approval or... Gary Gensler actually does get a $1 salary as that one guy in Congress is proposing he should have, which by the way, that sounds like a good bill, doesn't it? Um, then you very well may see quite a lot more attention on the Bitcoin market. Tangent, real quick, there's a bill going through Congress, uh, this, not going through Congress, but this has been proposed by a certain um, uh, congressperson, congressman, um, that says that Gary Gensler's $300,000 salary should be brought down to $1, and he's basically trying to defund the SEC. So if you are in the United States and you are involved in the electoral, uh, not, in, not in the electoral system, but in the democratic process, feel free to write a letter of of uh, approval for that if you agree with that legislation. Of course, there's more to the bill than just that, but I thought that was pretty cool. That that's a sentiment that is shared on Capitol Hill. It's not just in cryptocurrency. So with Bitcoin doing very well and the potential that it doesn't even need this small correction that we've talked about down to 32 and rallying, <clears throat> how does that get us to a doubling in the next uh, 18 months? Well, let's go ahead and draw out where 18 months from now is. 18 months from now would be April of 2025. If we draw a vertical line in April of 2025, I think you'll see why this is so likely. April of 2025 is right here. For Bitcoin to go all the way to this level, all we're really going to have to do, and I'll just go ahead and find a clean chart, actually, just delete all 28 drawings. That hurts sometimes to do, you know. We go to April of 2022. For Bitcoin to go to that level of $70,000, essentially just call it all-time high, you basically just have to continue the same trend. You see this? This is, this is why I say that I make these bold predictions sometimes, and people end up saying, oh, Jeb, that's not steep enough. Because, you know, if we kept this trend line, we'd be there in September of next year. That's uh, six to seven months early. So could it happen in 12 months? 12 months would, of course, be November of next year. Yes, absolutely. We could hit it November of next year, November 8th. Uh, one year from today is the presidential election. It could absolutely happen. Conservatively, let's just say all right, we're giving it 18 months and Bitcoin's going to hit that level. What does that mean for us? Well, first of all, let's just explain a little bit why I think that's going to happen. Looking out here on the longer term charts, just an extrapolation of our current market puts us there. But is that what happens in bull markets? Do we just continue with the general trend? No, we shoot up. Now, of course, this bull market was colored by the actions of the Fed with a huge amount of monetary policy changes with the printing of money, the purchasing of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities specifically. They don't run the printer. That's the treasury. But with the slamming of the interest rates down to the floor with what was going on in the oil market, all those things drove Bitcoin through a massive rally. But even here, you have a rally and then you have the bull market, right? You have kind of two angles here that the market goes through. The initial and the second. The initial movement and the second movement. The second movement ends up being a lot steeper. We're going through this initial movement right now. What will the second movement look like? When will it begin? It'll probably begin over here. And it could very well take us to two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars by the end of the next by the end of the next bull market. We've been in a major rally for a year now. Notice this is I think today might actually be exactly one day from when FTX collapsed. Was it November eighth or was it November tenth? What was it? What day was it? I think it was November then. I think it was November the 8th, actually. It should have titled the stream around that. It's been one year since the collapse of FTX. We've got a guilty verdict for Sam Bankman-Fried, and the market is soaring. Everybody thought the market was dead. Let me tell you something. From the time FTX collapsed, Bitcoin's up 73%. From bottom, Bitcoin has moved by 125%. There's no reason that Bitcoin cannot do that again. I'm very confident that it will. Bitcoin will be moving up to a trillion and a half dollars in the next 18 months. And what does that mean for us? Well, that's really the point. The most important thing that we need to talk about here is how to approach this through essentially what amounts to a personal finance lens. By the way, if you guys don't know, I do um, financial coaching and I will help you with your personal finances. If you are interested, you can check the link down below. Uh, there is a link down there to set up a session. I've done it with some of you guys and you guys have walked away 
getting your money's worth. It's been a lot of fun sitting down and going over your personal finances. I'm not a personal finance guru. I just know some things and I've implemented a lot of strategies. I have a methodology called financial sovereignty that I believe will generate wealth for you in the long run, basically guaranteed if you follow it. And so I want to teach you that. So if you're interested in personal finance and uh, financial coaching, then check the link down below because I can help you save thousands of dollars on the debt that you're paying for. I can help you save thousands of dollars in money that's going to crazy things. I've seen some craziness in people's personal finances. And I'll tell them, I'm like, this is... You, like, don't, you can't keep doing this, man. I got to be level with, I love you and I want you to succeed. You got to stop this. We got to start this. And people walk away encouraged because they're like, man, I finally have some answers. I finally know, all right, it might be hard. I might have to make a lifestyle change, but at least I know what to do. Many times we don't know what to do with finances. So if you want some help with that, I would be more than happy to give you any help that I can. Check that out down below. Wow. Well, okay. Note to self, clear my lot and look at neighbor's palm trees. Yes, palm trees do have a lot of seeds. That's true. Make sure to hit the like button. Let's see if we can't get up to 100 likes. Mike Lowry said 10 trillion market cap. Let's go. I think that's definitely going to happen. <laughs> Writing to Congress does nothing. Only big lobbyists can buy favor with big cash. Sadly, you're mostly correct, which is why I'll be honest, I probably won't be writing to it. You can also get rodents in palm trees. Did not know that. Makes sense, though. All right. So how do we prepare ourselves for this coming doubling on Bitcoin? Forgive me, guys. I am still quite sick, and I am doing my best to power through. Um, the best way for us to set up ourselves up for success is just the same way that you would with any budget, with any um, successful financial plan, and that is to boil it down into daily, weekly, or monthly habits. The channel, let me just kind of give you a little bit of a uh, praise report, a, a, something that's exciting for the channel. And I'll use this to make my point. Bitcoin, excuse me, excuse me, not Bitcoin, but the channel has just turned around into positive subscriber growth. And the reason that we'd been losing subscribers was because, frankly, there just weren't that many people in crypto. People are coming back into crypto and I've been a lot more consistent on content. I missed some time last week, of course, because I was very sick and I'm going to do my very best not to do that anymore. But we managed to have some growth. You can see views are up. Watch time is getting there. It's starting to move in the right direction. I had a ton of watch time yesterday. Subscriber growth is actually going up. We're gaining subscribers in the last 24 to, in the last uh, 28 days. You can see that right here. You can see all the analytics. I'm very transparent. I don't care. You can see it if you want. You see the live subscriber count. You can see we're actually starting to gain some more subscribers. We've been losing subscribers. First of all, I had not been posting that many videos. We're posting a video a day now, guys. And that's kind of the point I want to make. We've been losing subscribers. But you know when we've had these bumps in subscribers, despite the rough market conditions? It's been during the times that we have been doing something daily. And this is something that I'm learning right now. I don't mind showing you those analytics. Do they pay me in the best picture? No, but I don't care because my goal is to be authentic, not to be the most popular or the most like, wow, look at him. We've got 200,000 subscribers. We've been doing this for a long time. I know what I'm doing, but golly, I'll tell you what, there's still a lot for me to learn. One of the reasons that I feel that I'm becoming an expert in technical analysis and in crypto and in um, YouTube after six years of doing this, it'll be six years this channel turns in a week, week and a day, November 16th, is because I know how much I don't know. Have you ever heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? Let me just show you where I am on the bar. It's been six years. Let me just remind you of something. It has been six years that I've been doing this. You've probably heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is a graph of confidence and competence. When you start something new, you've got a lot of confidence because you don't know how much you don't know. When you first start YouTube, you're right, you're right here. Man, I got five subscribers. Whoa, I'm so good at this. You start becoming an expert when you get down here in the valley of despair and you have more competence and you know enough of what you don't know to know what you need to know and what you need to learn that your confidence goes down. You're like, man, I kind of suck. That's about where I am. It's taken me six years to get here. And now I'm climbing up this slope right here where I'm becoming an expert at YouTube. I'm becoming an expert in technical analysis. I'm becoming an expert in crypto. And I just want to reiterate, I've been doing this every day for six years, and I just now feel like I'm starting to become an expert. I just now feel like, man, I'm starting to get some traction. I just now feel like I am starting to get something down. And one of the things that I've learned from my mistakes, many of them there are, many of them there are. One of the things I've learned from my mistakes is that one big burst of energy doesn't really do much. For example, those climate of crypto videos we made earlier on in the year, I wasn't able to sustain it yet. They're coming back. But when I was doing that, they were getting like 400, 500 subscribers every single time that video went up. And I sustained it for about two to three months. But then it stopped because a lot of stuff was happening. 
A lot of that stuff is cleared up now, and they're going to come back, and they're going to be better than ever. They're going to be great, and they're going to be the smack... De they're going to be the absolute best technical analysis content in the game, period. I believe that on cryptocurrency YouTube. And I don't mean to be prideful, and forgive me if I'm being, but I believe they're going to be the best cryptocurrency technical analysis content in the game. But the way that I've become successful on YouTube is by doing something in a daily, weekly, or monthly routine. The way this channel got to its first 60, 70,000 subscribers, I uploaded a video every day for three and a half years. I never missed more than two weeks a year. Maybe three at most. And the one year that I think I did miss three weeks was because YouTube banned me for a week, so I couldn't do anything about it anyway. I uploaded over 340 videos a year. And it was a daily routine. And they would, I would go six months without missing a day. Right? I was single, so it was a little bit easier. But I'm getting to that point again. I'm getting to being that consistent again. That's where it became successful. So why do I say all this? Is it to brag on myself? No. Because frankly, a lot of what I just said, I'm highlighting my mistakes more than my victories. The reason I say all of this is quite simply because I want to give you a lesson in personal finance. And that is that you need to figure out what you're going to do daily, weekly, or monthly. And it's something I call a 40-year habit. Israel wandered through the desert for 40 years. What is something that they could have done for the whole 40 years to make themselves more righteous, more successful, more whatever, more of whatever they're trying to become? What are your 40-year habits? What are you going to do every day, every week, or every month, or every year for 40 years that you will look back and say, I am who I am because I did that? For me, it's reading three chapters of the Bible every single day. I've read three chapters of the Bible every single day for the last two and a half months. I missed two days. And both of those days, it slipped my mind. It wasn't because I chose not to. And the next day, I made it up. That becomes a part of me. I am a person that reads three chapters of the Bible every day. I try to study and try to grow in my understanding of God's word. For you in personal finance, what do we do to apply all of this? We need to decide what are we going to do daily, weekly, or monthly to succeed in the bull market. Bitcoin's doubling within the next 18 months. I'm quite confident on that. It's very possible that I could be wrong, but I'm quite confident that that's going to happen. What can we do daily or weekly? Dollar cost average. That simple. We can dollar cost average, same way we would into the stock market. We say every week or every month, probably not every day, but about every week or every month, then we're going to uh, we're going to invest a certain amount. And that's why I wish there was an index that covered the total market capitalization. There are some indexes, but um, and you should look into them, and I want to look into them more because they might be a good option. But uh, we want to see what are we going to do in dollar cost average into. Maybe we're going to put $100 a month into Bitcoin. Maybe we're going to put $100 a month into Cardano. Maybe you've got twenty five dollars sitting on the side and you want to dump some cash in. Great. Set up your monthly or your weekly routine. I dollar cost average 1% of my monthly income, whatever it is. You figure out what is your investment budget? How much money are you going to budget into your personal finances that you are going to invest every single month? Is it $100 a month? Is it $200 a month? Is it $300 a month? How much of that's going to stocks? How much of that's going to crypto? That depends on what you know better. If you are a expert in cryptocurrency, then sure, most of it will probably go into cryptocurrency. If you're not an expert in cryptocurrency, put more of it in the stock market because you don't know what you're doing yet. Understand more, become wiser because wise people make wise financial decisions. And then we can dollar cost average and take advantage of this market. What should we dollar cost average into though? <clears throat> That's where we want to look at our end at our um, cryptocurrencies. One of the first things to look into is obviously Bitcoin. I think dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin is a great idea. Great idea for the bull market. You can do it in the bear market too. The main place to not dollar cost average is near the top. When the market has already gone through the bull market, pause your dollar cost averaging, start dollar cost selling, right? Start selling, you know, 1% of your portfolio every week, whatever it is. But I do believe that the best way to succeed in the cryptocurrency market is by gradually putting in or gradually putting out. Cycling in, cycling out, cycling in, cycling out. Right now is the time to be cycling into the market. Ethereum, great option. I recommend having that in your portfolio. Binance and XRP, I recommend having both of them in your portfolio, partially because both of them are fighting the SEC. And to be honest, they're probably both going to win. XRP already has. Binance, frankly, may get a little bit more heat than XRP did, but to be honest with you, probably not by much. I think they're both good options. Solana, as much as I have issues with its stability, it is a market that has grown quite a lot, and it's a good idea to have some of it in there. Cardano, good idea to have some of it in there. Dogecoin, good idea to have some of it in there. Toncoin, I've not done a ton of research on, no pun intended. <clears throat> but I think it's a good idea to have it in there. Tron, sure. You notice I'm kind of running down the market. I'm kind of saying, look, all of these. Guys, it, when I t recommend people to invest in the stock market, and you should, I recommend first buying the market. When you're in the stock market, you say the market. You're talking about the S&P 500. That is the index of the top 500 in the market. 
B, do something similar in the cryptocurrency space. Buy some of most of at least the top 10 or 15. That's my recommendation. Be diversified. And then, and then say, okay, I'm going to go deep on this altcoin. And I'm going to see, is this undervalued or is this overvalued? How do you do fundamental analysis on an altcoin? Let's run that down. First things first. Look at the white paper. Look at their resources. Look at their website. Look at their team. Figure out who is this team. Go check out what they're doing on Twitter. Is the team active? Are they a bunch of fake profile pictures? Is the person named five different things depending on what website you go on? Is it just a stock photo of a person? Of a person? Don't buy that project. Just don't, just don't even touch it. Um, are the people, do they have track records? Are there people that are backing it that are not just being paid to back it, but they're backing it because they actually put some of their cred behind it? What's the, uh, what's the market that they're trying to uh, tap into? What is the value proposition? How do they bring value to the customer? If you find altcoins and say, look, I think that these altcoins are going to provide real value and I think it's worth you know, $10 billion market capitalization right now. I think it'll probably be worth $100 billion market capitalization. Here are my reasons, then go for it. Now is a great time with the bull market starting to be investing in the cryptocurrency market similarly to how you would invest in the stock market. You may pick individual stocks. You may pick individual indexes. You may pick individual whatever. An ETF, a mutual fund, if for some reason you want to do that. You, you might do all of that, but you start off with a baseline of investing in what the market, proper noun, capital T, the market, capital M, proper noun, the market, not just the market, but the market, the S&P 500. Same thing in the, in the cryptocurrency market. Start by just getting a smattering of everything, everything in the top 20. Maybe, maybe a little bit more of some, maybe a little bit less of some. Rank order it, how much you're going to put in there by... Market capitalization. Maybe you're going to put a thousand bucks a month. And so you're going to put, you know, 50% of it into Bitcoin. Get 15% of it into Ethereum. Go down the list. Get a smattering of it. And treat it that way. I want to look at, I, this is something that I actually want to look into because it's something I'd be interested in, is looking at the different index funds options. I do believe that Coinbase has a cryptocurrency index fund. It's something that I would want to look into for sure because that's kind of what I'm talking about is some kind of index fund for the cryptocurrency market. You want to get a broad coverage. Then make sure that you're buying Bitcoin individually and then also make sure that you are buying some altcoins that you believe in. Cardano is one I believe in. XRP is one I believe in. I think both of them will do very, very well in the bull market. Let's see, another one, uh, Ethereum. I believe Ethereum will do very well in the bull market. Of course, there's some allegations with Vitalik, but to be honest with you, Ethereum is way bigger than Vitalik right now. So even if something came out and there was a huge fraud going on on ETH uh, on with Vitalik, if the uh, market is following what the cryptocurrency is doing rather than what the founder is doing, then it'll probably still be okay. Let's see. Phil the Flying Frenchman in chat said, good morning, sir. Queen said, diversity is key. Yes, no, said, bullish on CryptoJeb YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Shane Sullivan said, Jeb, you're very inspirational at a young age. You know what's funny? Somebody said, Jeb, you're so young, but you're the old guy in crypto because you've been here for so long. And that kind of feels about accurate. It won't be long that I will have been in crypto for half of crypto's entire life, which is, wow, that's nuts. I've been in cryptocurrency for over six years. This channel will be turning six not too long from now. YouTube's honest hater bringing some hate. He said, I'll come back when you're done talking about yourself. Fair enough. I don't like talking about myself, but I do like using my own failures as an example, and I have plenty of them to choose from. And so some of my failures in consistency, I hope can teach you a lesson about the value thereof. Anthony Sullivan in, uh, excuse me, Anthony Silva. What's up, Silva? In chat. Shadrach Frost in chat said, folks, please take a quick second to smash the like button for Jeb. He, continue, he comes here daily for us, and it's a small effort to show love and support. I really do appreciate it, guys. And I've got a lot of things that I want to do on the channel, a lot of things I want to do in cryptocurrency, and a lot of things that I want to share with you guys. Um, just a lot. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. I'm really excited to see um, the channel turning around and putting out content. I mean, the analytics on the channel right now are very, very, very encouraging. Some of the videos are getting a ton of views. Um, YouTube saying, look, all the videos you're putting out are doing well. I want to get to the point where I'm putting out even more videos. I want to put even more editing into them. I mean, over the last 48 hours, we've gotten over 32 and a half thousand views. That's so cool because I've seen those numbers before. It's just been a long time, but I'm so excited about it. And then you also look over here, check this out. The videos are bringing in 600 subscribers in the last 28 days. I'm just so pumped about that. I'm so pumped about that. We're going to continue making great content, or at least content that I hope you believe is great. You guys can be the judge of that. And we'll see what happens 
from here. What month will the bull market peak? I think probably in quarter one to quarter two of 2025. Chainlink was staking your XRP for long-term investment. I think both. I think diversifying both of them. Chainlink is an incredible market. An incredible market. Shane Sullivan said, Jeb is a humble guy. You know, the first verse that I ever, uh, that the Lord ever put on my heart that I ever memorized was Matthew 23, 12. It says, he who humbles himself will be exalted, but he who exalts himself will be humbled. It might be the other way around. But the, the point thereof is that the, the best way to explain that and something that I've tried and failed to live by is that if you walk into a room and it's a dinner party and it's a banquet and you are, let's just say, maybe not held in the highest of esteem and you walk up and you sit right in the man of the house's chair or let's say you're walking into a king's banquet and you walk right up and you sit in the throne, somebody, a servant's going to come up and they're going to say, excuse me, sir, you do not belong in this chair. This is this is an esteemed um, chair for you to be in, uh, for someone to be in. This is for someone else. So I'm going to have to ask you to move down to the end of the table or go sit at the kid's table or something, right? A less esteemed place. If, however, you walk in and you are a man of character or a woman of character, you know, I think the man, the word man and woman ought to carry some weight. If I say that's a woman right there, that's a man right there, you ought to feel something. You ought to feel like, oh man, he's got respect for them, right? If you're a man and you walk in that room or you're a woman and you walk in that room, a lot of strength behind those words. You're, you're a man. You're a woman. You walk in that room and you go sit at the kids' table. You go sit in the corner and face the wall and you've got a name behind you that you have earned. The servant on behalf of the king or on behalf of the man of the household is going to walk up and say, hey, what are you doing? You don't belong here. Come with us. Come sit right at the right hand of the king, of the man of the house. Come sit in the most esteemed place that you can sit in without owning the building that you've just walked in. That's how I want to live my life. The Bible also says, don't speak well of yourselves. Refrain your lips and let somebody else speak well for you. That's in Proverbs. Something to that effect. And again, I have failed so many times, probably even in this stream, for living that out. But that is the standard that I want to bear. That is the standard that I want to carry. And Lord, please help me to be as humble as I can because God only knows that every time that I step out in sin or in pride, for God opposeth the proud, but gives grace to the humble, the Bible says. Every time I step out in pride, it always, always bites me. That's something I tell my son and I try to teach him. Every time we step out in sin and we do something contrary to God's plan, it will always bite us. It will always get to you. It'll always bite you. We just might not know how. And so with that financially and bring this all back to crypto, because I, like I like to talk about things outside of crypto, but I like to bring it back into crypto. How do we apply that? The word has a lot to say on finances. And one of the things that it talks about is having stewardship. Genesis 1, 128, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth, moveth upon the earth. He said, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. That's the first commandment. Fill the earth. Why? Well, so that we can have dominion over it. It is our call to have control over the world. We must have control over our finances. We must have control over our budgeting. We must have been the ones in control of that which has been placed under our authority. Not in a tyrannical way, but in a gentle and a kind stewardship that is selfless and for the benefit of others with meekness. And that's what we want to do with our finances. We want to say, look, we have had finances placed in our stewardship. We've had a family placed in our stewardship. We've had a home placed in our stewardship. We've had a business placed in our stewardship. And for the benefit of others, not for ourselves, because remember meekness, the meek shall inherit the earth, not the prideful, not the tyrannical, not the domineering, not the dictators, the meek shall inherit the earth. We shall steward those things well so that we can bless others. And so when we live in that way, we will grow well. When you have control over your finances and you say, I have a plan, I'm going to put it in place, and I'm going to work hard to make sure that I can follow through on it, then we will succeed. What are some of the altcoins I think of 5 or 10x? Cardano, XRP, Chainlink, Polkadot, BNB. Notice I'm naming a lot of the top 10. I think a lot of the top 10 survived the bear market and will continue. That's a good sign for the maturity of the industry. Last bull market, 2020, uh, 2017 to 2021's bull market, most everything that was doing well in 2017 was dead by 2021. That's a dip. Excuse me. That's a difference of this bull market. Most everything that was succeeding in 2021 is still succeeding today. That shows a lot of maturity in this space. How do we take advantage of that? By applying the principles of financial sovereignty, by being consistent, by being hardworking, by maintaining a proper balance between our family and our work and ensuring that they are both working in mutually beneficial harmony, by trusting the Lord, by bringing things under control, by getting rid of frivolous expenses, by selling things you don't need, by getting rid of debt that's weighing you down, by making a plan and investing every single day in your growth, your financial your financial literacy, 
your understanding and knowledge <clears throat> of the cryptocurrency space, your understanding and knowledge of biblical finance and financial sovereignty, and um, by making investments in the cryptocurrency in the stock market, for example, and by, you know, making investments in your eternal future by being generous to people. It's very, very important that we get control over those things in our lives and we steward them selflessly. I don't say get control over them as if, you know, we're talking about a dictator here. I'm not talking about the Fidel Castro or the Adolf Hitler way of getting things under control. That is wrong. Full stop. I'm talking about getting things under control and using them for the betterment of others. Selflessness, meekness, loving kindness, and you will be blessed. Because I tell you what, the most rewarding, joyful ways that I've ever spent money has been giving it selflessly to someone else. And I have had a lot of money pass through my hands in my day. I've had millions of dollars pass through my hands in my day. And I'm very happy when I'm able to give it to others. Bitcoin Trini said, what's going on? I know some of you guys are like, oh, jabs on your soapbox again. Let me just, there we go. Put it away. All right, let's read some chat and then we're going to wrap it out. Silas Borg in chat. Good to see you. Say, good morning, crypto fans. Fam, scooping up more ADA. Shadrach Frost said, hashtag ADA gang. Let me just ask in the chat. Are you hashtag ADA gang? Yes, no, maybe so. Let's hear it. Now, I have to make an announcement. Because Sam Price, my good friend, and I love you, Sam, otherwise known as Crypto Lifer, has been streaming every single day for like four years. I go in his chat sometimes. Shout out to him. He's probably live right now. If you haven't subscribed to Crypto Lifer, you should. He's got some solid technical analysis. I'm sure he's live right now. He's normally live right about now. Ugh, crypto Jab, not Crypto Jab. Uh, crypto Lifer. He's probably live right now. He is live right now. Go check out his stream because I'm about to wrap out and go over and check out him. He has challenged me to a rap battle. Hmm. You heard it here first, folks. He's challenged me to a rap battle. I love you, man. It's the worst delivery I ever heard. I love you, bro. But also, I heard your rap from Crypto Jeb. I love you both. Very, you know, I was a rapper. I've been a rapper for since I was 13. I will blow you both off the water. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, you want to hear a rap real quick to teach you how to rap? Let's hear it. All right. I'll teach you how to rap. I got as many problems as stars in the sky, but like my love loss makes my heart wonder why. At 19th and 8th, you had a pot with a sigh. Yesterday, street seller, just a cop with a guy. I felt deep emotion when you started to cry. I walked away, saw the clouds part in the sky. The sun blinded me like a dart in my eye, and it gave me inspiration to spit this auto supply. Because missing you is what's so hard to deny. And kissing you, it always just started my fly. And lately, I'm edgy like glass shards in a pie, but I got to keep it moving like them cars going by. Plus, I cover ground near and far to the sky. I had first and ten, but by God, you were shy. To cope, I used to smoke out that glass jar and get high. You'll be educated when these 16 balls multiply. I'll teach you how to rap, Jason, if you want. I can give you some set, some pointers, man. You know what I mean? Because that, that delivery was... I'm sorry, man. I was on Instagram, and That thing was... Ah! What was that we said earlier about pride cometh before the fall? Challenge accepted. If you enjoyed today's stream, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And I am looking forward to bringing you guys some more content relatively soon. Got an interesting idea for today's video, so stay tuned. And uh, shout out to Crypto Lifer. I love you. I love you. But the Bible says that um, God chasteneth those that he loves. And we're called to be like him. So stay on the lookout. Working on something. <laughs> Shane Sullivan in chat said nothing more satisfying than putting a smile on someone's face he is a hater you got this Jeb lifer's going down not a hater he's a good friend he just I think he may have spoke a little bit out of turn <laughs> don't get me wrong it was good it, it was it was all right it was all right what he did little 90s but you know crypto lifers from before the 90s so I get it I get it man's a little old I understand no hate no hate. I get it I appreciate it <laughs> we shall see all right if you guys enjoyed today's stream make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel but before i go i do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always and i will see you guys in the next video peace oh i got a real good feeling